Russia is targeting Ukraine's civilian infrastructure with attacks on power plants. What they're targeting is mostly electricity distribution stations. Water supply plants have also taken hits. Plunging huge parts of the country into cold and darkness. I think what is really important to realize about these uh, air raid attacks on critical infrastructure is that they are a reaction to Russian battlefield setbacks. And now, since those setbacks, it is very openly acknowledged in the Russian public that the goal of these attacks is to make Ukraine an unlivable place. So the winter that uh, it begins now, but it lasts until April and it's very cold in Ukraine and uh, living in those conditions without heating is, uh, is dangerous. For me personally, it means that about, about half of the day I have to assume that there will be no energy and I've spent quite some time on trying to find a solution uh, in Kiev, uh, moving a bit to the outskirts, so the house that I'm renting a room in now has an oven with firewood, it has a generator that could be kicked in, um, but it's expensive. And we have a, a car battery system that keeps the lights and the Wi-Fi running, and also the heating keeps running, so uh, we do uh, have sort of a bridging solution uh, when the power goes out, and it doesn't get cold immediately. And if things would get very bad, I would I would sit in the car and drive and, and keep warm like that. And uh, I, I pay close attention that my car is always fully fueled. That's another uh, problem that if the lights go out, uh, also uh, petrol pumps stop working and there are huge buildups at, at petrol stations as well. Closer to the active fighting, it's even more desperate. In some areas, there was no electricity for weeks on end. So uh, there will be a point when many people will decide that they have to leave to remain safe. And the people who will take this decision first are probably the ones with the means to do so, who are mobile, who can work from another place, who have a bit of money on the side or who have a car. Um, and they take these decisions first, leaving behind more vulnerable people, people um, uh, who, who are older, uh, people with a disability or with a chronic illness, um, also often single parents, who have less such means to, to just uh, pack up and leave. The most economically active leaving uh, disrupts the economy even further so that these people um, have less a chance of an income, uh, which makes them ever more vulnerable and uh, in many cases it will make them uh, dependent on humanitarian aid. The first measure to keep Ukraine safe would be for Western countries to continue strengthening Ukrainian air defense systems. They are sort of the first line of defense to uh, keep Russia from destroying more uh, energy infrastructure, but also just to raise the cost for each of these attacks. Then it's very important that Ukrainian engineers get the tools they need to repair energy infrastructure very quickly. Um, and it's also important that they get logistical equipment uh, because the economic uh, impact of uh, power outages is much higher if they're unscheduled than if people can prepare for them actually. And it's really important that Ukrainians individually can also uh, adapt to that situation. Where there is a market, it's best to give just cash because then people know exactly what they need. But closer to the front line, there is often no market. And there it's really important to, to give boilers, generators, ovens, uh, firewood, briquettes, coal, diesel, uh, and really just blankets and warm clothing as well. If individual Ukrainians are not able to prepare for the cold and dark that's ahead in this winter, they will come to a point where they will have to leave and that would disrupt the economy, the social fabric, uh, all local support networks that have proven so uh, vital so far in this conflict. That would be a damage that would take uh, decades to repair and it would lead to a new migration crisis uh, inside Ukraine with internally displaced people but also at the borders with Poland, Slovakia, Hungary, Romania where new uh, large groups of people uh, desperate to find uh, warm spaces would arrive.